The word courage has two parts. C-O-U-R, which comes from the Latin root cora, which means the heart, and the A-G-E piece, which comes from the same root as agility or action, which means to take action. So it really means to act from the heart or to speak from the heart. This is Walking Your Talk, a podcast about leadership, authenticity, and courage. I'm Carolyn Taylor. Over my career, I've worked with well over 100,000 leaders in every kind of organization. People who are committed to closing the gap between their own values and those of their organization and how they show up every day. I wrote a book called Walking the Talk on how you change corporate culture, but this is much more personal. If you want to be known as someone who walks their talk, then this podcast is for you. This podcast is all about authenticity. And this week, and in the next series of episodes, we're really going to touch on some of the most important characteristics of those who others consider to be authentic because we're going to talk today about having the courage to speak up, to have the courage, in fact, to speak from your heart, to hear or experience something that you think is not right, and to raise your voice to speak out about that. Now, unfortunately, when one of us does that, it often leads to a, what we could call a difficult conversation, because by difficult, I mean that the other person or the other people often don't necessarily welcome somebody speaking up and suggesting that what they're doing is in some way not right, especially if it's implicit that it's not right from a values perspective. So we're talking on some quite sensitive ground here, and I don't want to beat about the bush. Speaking up is difficult and will often produce a defensive reaction in the other person. You are, after all, implicitly or explicitly suggesting that the other person is wrong, and maybe even unethical in what they've been doing or saying. And nobody finds that easy to hear. So there's no question that these conversations do require courage, and that the root of that word, the heart piece, which is to speak from the heart, or to speak with your own conviction, which is why, of course, when people do it, they are so authentic, because you can tell that they're having a difficult conversation because they believe something to be important enough to be willing to step into that difficulty that occurs. I think the first question we've got to ask here is, why would you bother? Why would you do that? And how would you do it? And when would you do it? The answers to that are not completely black and white, and I want to explore them with you from my experience and and ask some questions so that you can start exploring what that might mean for you personally. Today, we will look at why would you do it, when would you do it, and how would you do it. And then next week, I want to look more broadly at what it actually means to be values-driven. Because in taking a decision to speak up about something, you are in fact deciding to do what is right, what is the right thing, and making that more important than the personal convenience or comfort zone, staying inside your comfort zone sort of comfort of staying quiet. So it is, in fact, an act which is driven by something that is greater than your own short-term convenience, which might be comfort. So when is it worth it? When is it important enough to you personally to do that? And I find there are two main reasons which move people to act from their heart, to be courageous, to speak up. The first one is when you personally feel you're being wronged by the other person. They're hurting you in some way, or they're abusing you in some way. And the second is when you see something that strikes you as being wrong in the broader sense, a decisions being made which might cause harm, not so much to you, but to other people, or you know that it's illegal or it's unethical in your opinion. So those are two quite different situations. The one where you feel that actually you need to speak up because you're being hurt in some way, and the other you need to speak up because you see a broader value 
being challenged or not being held by the decision or the action that's being taken. So in this episode, we're going to start with the first. We're going to focus on when you feel that you're being wronged. And then do you have the courage to speak up in that situation? And in the next episode, where I talk more broadly about values, we'll start looking at what it takes to speak up when you see a value being compromised. So you being wronged could be anything on a very wide range. It could be that you feel you're not being listened to, or you're not being paid enough attention, or you're not being respected. It could be stronger than that. Maybe you feel you're being discriminated against or being bullied. But in any way, it's that someone else or a group of people are treating you in a way that, in your opinion, is really not okay. So where do I start? Where do we start at looking at what it would take for you to speak up where previously you would have been quiet? And when I'm working with people in a coaching sense, what I find is the differentiator between people who are able to take the step and speak up and people are not is usually centered in how they're feeling about themselves and what level of respect they have of themselves and therefore the extent to which they really feel that what is happening, they have a right to speak up against what is happening to them. I know this is a really sensitive area. Most of my career, I've been actually a very isolated woman in a world dominated by men. And yet I have never honestly felt that it held me back. Today, when the rights and abuse of women is, is coming to the surface so much more widely and being spoken up on many different levels, and many men are being held to account for how they have behaved, I often reflect deeply on why I never felt abused or disrespected in that way. You know, maybe I was just lucky. But what I can share with you is that I always took responsibility for speaking up and for raising it if I felt I wasn't being heard that I found a place inside of me where I loved myself enough and valued myself enough to fight for myself and my rights. And that sense of self-worth does not come easily. It's a lifetime of effort for both men and women, I think. For most men or women, at least. Because I think the beliefs that we have of unworthiness run very deep. And again, I would say that in my experience is both men and women. But here's a step for you. And this is the step that I will work with people when I am coaching them. And when unworthiness is the thing that they feel is holding them back from being able to speak up. If you were worthy, if you felt you were worth it, which is what I think worthy really means, if you felt you were good enough, what would you have that you don't have now? Identify perhaps one thing that definitely fits into that category and one thing that you're prepared to fight for. Maybe it's a voice at the table or maybe it's higher pay or someone being less critical of you, more encouraging of you or someone being less controlling and more empowering of you. So think about what is that one thing that if you had and if you were worthy, you feel you would have, and are you ready to fight for that? So here's the exercise. Take responsibility for getting that one thing. Don't blame the other person for why you haven't got it. And that can be extremely difficult state of mind to get yourself into even if they absolutely have been doing that thing, describe it to yourself like this. Given X, Y, Z, given the other person has been ignoring me in every meeting and every time I speak up, they then repeat what I say as if it was their own. Given the other person has been flirting with me and I'm feeling very uncomfortable about that. Whatever it is that the other person has been doing, what can I do about it? And for me, that's what I mean by taking responsibility and not blaming. 
It's not saying that the other person isn't doing those things, but it's not anchoring or centering yourself in the blame of them. It's anchoring and centering yourself in taking responsibility for given that, what can I do about it? And then build a plan, a courage to speak up plan, a plan for having the right conversation with the right people. You might need to elicit someone else to help you, a coach or a buddy who's actually kind of on your side and working with you. And it might take you months, days, weeks, whatever, to actually implement that plan. But in the end, it'll be you who finds that voice and learns how to speak up. I would suggest you read books. There are some great books around. Um, there's one called Radical Candle by a woman called uh, Kim Scott, who I actually was a client of mine when she was working at Google. There are several great books called Difficult Conversations, Crucial Conversations, Fierce Conversations, all around how you have that difficult conversation. Because there's definitely techniques that you can use that make it less confronting, that evoke the defensive response in the other person less strongly. But nevertheless, you do have to assume that some of the things that you want to speak up about, somebody will get defensive on. And then step into it. Courage, remember, is fear plus action. So you will feel fear, and maybe you can take action. See how it goes. Try it again. Try it again. Make it your mission to see if you can get that one piece, that one action, that one outcome that you want by learning to speak up. So this is a big exercise. It goes deep. And I wish you really well with it. Next week is going to be our first episode on values, what it means to be values driven. And there, what it takes to have the courage to act on your convictions, not so much when you feel wronged, but when you see broader things happening that you feel are wrong. I hope you will join me again next week and further our journey to explore your own authenticity and how you can walk your talk at work.